John McConnell, like John Ox, Dermot Weld and Mark Johnson, has a veterinary degree. From his yard in County Meath, he explains why vets make successful trainers. I can see uh, slight lamenesses that maybe aren't, aren't that easy to see. Um, and obviously when I look at, at horses that have a problem, I have a fair idea what's wrong straight away. Um, so I can maybe spot a problem before it really becomes a big problem or I know how to deal with something um, without having to call um, our vet in. Um, and that's another big factor is I'd say maybe our, re our veterinary bills are reduced because we don't, uh, we don't have to call vets all the time because I, 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 know, I know what what needs calling out and what doesn't. We know, uh, you know the physiology of the animals um, and you know scientifically how to theoretically anyway how to get them as fit as possible which uh, you know certainly helps um, my training anyway the way I've developed um, our system um, there's, there's definitely a little bit of science to it and um, um, just in, in general pick, picking up picking up ailments maybe a little bit quicker than other than, than others is obviously going to be a help and then I'm going to the sales then um, you know, not knowing a horse is 100% sound. There's we what we call there's trainer sound and veterinary sound. And when I look at a horse to sales, I'm looking at it uh, from a veterinary sound point of view. Um, and I can bypass horses maybe that I know have problems that maybe to a non-veterinary person would be okay. But so yeah, it, it definitely is something that uh, it's it's definitely a plus. So <clears throat> there's an awful lot of other things that make. A trainer successful but um, uh, it's definitely a help. Yeah well we've two different gallops um, I suppose one is um, a quicker surface than the other so we we tend to canter a lot of the flat horses there and the, the, the deeper sand for the jump horses um, but it's you know it's in some ways it's brilliant to have both uh, flat and jumps because you're busy the whole year round there is times when you'd love to have a break but um, you know it keeps the show on the road and I like I, I love the feeling of a, a good two-year-old working well uh, the same as I love a uh, five-year-old schooling well it's the same sort of trail um, so um, I'm happy to be doing both at the minute and I think you can can do both um, my jumpers seem to be better quality at the minute but uh, we're we're always looking for nice um, flat horses as well. We've probably the most two year olds we've had in a good while this year, and some of them are, are showing plenty. So um, hopefully we can, um, you know, get a nice one this year and, and uh, reap the rewards. We started uh, riding at home, riding uh, show jumping and eventing. Um, Kildare Pony Club is probably the best pony club in the country so um, we were in that for years and then Michael O'Brien trained very close to us at home in Nace like within a walking distance and I used to ride out summers for him which I really loved and we also bred a, on a small scale thoroughbred mares we had four or five so um, I really got hooked when I went to work for Michael um, I was always going to be too heavy to be anything uh, on, uh, you know in terms of a jockey uh, so I always have my sights set on training. So um, the veterinary degree was a backup um, security, I suppose. But it took a while to to get going um, when we did start. But uh, thankfully, it's going well. The Cheltenham win with them is probably the most, the biggest high profile anyway. Um, uh, Aintree was great and Punchestown was great and. Uh, um, winning with a horse of ours, a, a case of you, the Angus who takes a couple of years ago was um, a big thing as well. Um, lots of great days. Um, you need all those days because you have a lot of bad days as well. So that's the beauty of the sport. Um, you, you never get too ahead of yourself. You keep your feet in the ground. And um, I'm always waiting for the next disaster around the corner. So uh, I, um, I never get too high, but it's, uh, it's been, we've had a great time of it in the last couple of years. We decided to set up Aspire Racing um, just, you know, to get a, try and buy a nice two-year-old um, in the breeze ups, and it, also it's a way of getting people involved at a, a not a too high a level. It's a one-off payment, 
um, that that gives you um, a share and a horse and a, and your training fees for six months. So um, it's a good way of getting people in, but it's also a commercial venture to try and find a nice uh, two-year-old that does well and that we can sell on a profit. That's the the ultimate goal of it. Um, uh, ideally, we'd we'd like a couple of horses, maybe um, to spread the risk. It's a commercial venture, uh, but with a kind of um, side effect of having people come in at a low enough level that, uh, and then you know a one-off payment that they uh, they won't have to pay every month. So it, it's the kind of dual purpose. Um, I mean, Henry de Bromhead is very successful at Jewel. Uh, he has some lovely flat horses as well as jump horses. Um, um, so for the time being, that's what we'll do. Um, if it goes one way or another, that's fine with me as well. But um, I don't think, I think it's, e it's definitely possible. Um, and hopefully we just, the future really, I, I, it'd be about increasing the quality of the horses. Um, broadening our owner base and you know uh, just sur surviving as well so um, trying to get the best out of each horse we have I still like winning races with kind of average horses that give me sometimes as much a thrill as winning with um, the bigger horses because uh, it could be uh, take more training to win with a, an average horse than maybe the good horses but um, yeah just to keep 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 having winners and um, keep living the dream that's the that's the future hopefully mm -hmm.